Hi, this is NQ. In this video, we'll be looking at Chromebooks and the Chrome OS operating system. Chromebooks in education are the new norm. I'll illustrate what you need to know about Chromebooks as an educator or as a student. So let's get started. Let's clear some misconceptions about Chromebooks. First of all, they are not operated by Windows, Mac OS, or any of the conventional operating systems. Chromebooks are operated by Chrome OS operating system, which is developed by Google, and it's very similar to Android, however with additional computing features. Chrome OS is an account-based operating system that works well with cloud computing and G Suite services. Chromebooks are mainly designed for internet browsing and light to medium use. It's perfect for students and educators regarding any academic work. Additionally, everything is saved in the Gmail account that you use to log in to the Chromebook, making it impossible to lose your work as it can be accessed from any device just log in with your Gmail account. Alright, so let's start using the Chromebook. When you switch on the Chromebook for the first time, this is what you will see. First thing, you need to select your Wi-Fi from here, then sign in with your email in here. As you can notice, the Chromebook I'm using is administered by this domain over here, which means I cannot use personal emails. And that's probably the case if you are using the Chromebook connected to your school. You can only log in with the school's email. When you click back, you will return to this page, which will show all the previous accounts that signed in to this device. In order to remove an account, you need to click on this arrow, then select Remove. On the lower shelf, you can see the options to shut down, sign in as a guest, which is a great option if you have a friend that wants to use your Chromebook, or adding another account. All right, so when you sign in, this is the first thing you will see. This is the desktop, while this is the shelf. While you are pointing the mouse on the shelf, if you swipe with two fingers, it will expand. If you swipe more, you will see your app drawer, and then you can swipe with two fingers up and down, or you can simply click on the arrow. When you click on this button, the shelf will expand. You can search for anything from here, and your last selected apps will appear in here. So when you right click, and to do a right click using the touchpad, you need to click with two fingers. You can see those options. You have the shelf position, which can be to the left, bottom, or right. I personally prefer the bottom. You can also choose it to auto hide, which simply means when you use an application, it will hide itself. When you point the mouse to the bottom, then it will appear. I personally like it to always be showing. From here, you can set a wallpaper for your desktop. Now you have a lot of options to choose from. I personally prefer landscape and clicking on the daily refresh, which will change a picture every day. Clicking on it again will change the picture or simply click refresh. You can also explore on the web. All right, so this is to customize the desktop. When you click on multi view, you will see all the current apps that are working. Currently, I'm opening the Chrome and the screen recorder I'm using to record this video. From here, you can choose a new desk. So as you can see, we have two desks and to change between them, you can either click on the multi view again and select desk one. As you can see in desk one, I have those two apps in desk two, I have nothing. Or you can simply swipe with four fingers between the two desks as shown. You can add as many desks as you want. This can become in handy while multitasking. Maybe you have one desk for internet browsing and one desk for typing in Google Docs. Moreover, when you click on multi view, you can click and hold one app and then drag it to open in a split screen view as shown. And that's the desktop. The Chromebook has two modes, the desktop mode or the tablet mode. And the tablet mode happens when you change the position of your Chromebook. You will immediately be presented with the app drawer as shown. When you try to type something, the visual keyboard will appear as shown and you can use it the way you use a tablet. 
Alright, so let's get back to the desktop mode. And that's the Chromebook layout. It's very simple and elegant. It's best if you familiarize yourself with it. All right, let's continue. And this time we'll be talking about the settings. So to access the settings, you need to go to the system tray in here and you can see it shows all notifications on top and those are some of the settings shown. So those two control the loudness and the brightness and you have some instant settings shown such as the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and notifications. I can switch off Bluetooth and you can even click on this arrow to check more functions. For instance, in notifications, you can choose which apps or websites are allowed to notify. If you accidentally allow a website to keep on notifying you, you can come and uncheck it from here. Nightlight is a great option for the eye and from here you can either shut down, lock your account or even sign out from the account. You can click on here and check all the signed in accounts. Currently I'm only signed in with this account. I can click on here to sign another user. Clicking here will minimize the settings. You can click on full settings from here. Those are the main categories and they are all listed here. You have network, Bluetooth, the same thing. Whenever you need a setting, you can either scroll to find it or simply use the search in here. Now, just to clarify, this is a managed Chromebook by the Emas school domain. So some of the functions are managed by the school. For instance, connecting the phone, whenever you see this icon, which means I cannot control this option. Another important setting is the people. As you can see, if I click over here, I have two signed accounts. From here, you can add an account or you can remove the account, but you cannot remove the main one. In order to remove it, then you need to sign out first, then remove. Now, syncing is very important. The options can be customized to see exactly what you want to sync. Manage what you sync is also important. You can either sync everything from apps, bookmarks, extensions, and so on, or customize what you want to sync. For Chromebooks, I prefer syncing everything. Another important setting is the device in here and you have several aspects that you need to note about. For instance, the touchpad, you have a lot of options. The speed of the touchpad or if you want touchpad acceleration, you can check from here. However, one thing I want to change is the reverse scrolling as I don't want to swipe up while the scrolling goes down. If you like it, you can keep it. In the keyboard, you have a lot of options, including what do you want each of these buttons to represent. And from here, you can view all the keyboard shortcuts. We'll discuss them later. Language and input settings. From here, you can add languages and you can add an input method. So let's add Arabic. And now I have the options to add the keyboards. And from here, you can choose whether you want the input options to be shown on shelf. For instance, in here, you can simply click on it and choose what input method you want and how exactly, either by handwriting or voice. You could also check the displays. You will get more features if you connect an external display. For night light, you can schedule it from a custom time or simply from sunset to sunrise. It's up to you. You can make it cooler or warmer. Several settings are shown in here. You can go through them. Another one is to select your search engine. And of course, Google is the best one. It's always good to scroll and see what options do you have. All right, so one more thing is the accessibility options, the last part. And I want to demonstrate what you can do with it. Let me just click on this. And now you will see it in the system menu, accessibility. So once I look into the options, you have a lot of options to choose from. You can try them out, see if you need any one of them. For instance, I like the dictation, continue and you can see it in here now the moment when you are about to type something let's say in the google search i can simply click on dictation how is the weather today to access it immediately you can simply click the shortcut search d so those are the settings have a look at them and use them see which settings best suit you to fully utilize a chromebook it's important that you personalize it Alright, next thing on the list is to look at the apps and apps option. 
The most important apps are the Play Store where you can get all the other apps. Most of the Android apps work well with Chromebooks. However, since this is a managed Chromebook, only selected apps will appear in the Play Store. And then you have, of course, the main player is the Chrome. It's not advised to use any other browsing app as Chromebooks are fully maximized with Chrome. There are a lot of options in Chrome and it deserves its own video, which is also uploaded on this channel. And of course, the files. When you do a right click, you get these options. You can pin an app to the shelf, will appear over here. You can also unpin it. When you open the files, you can see that the Google Drive is automatically connected while any local download will be saved in here. This is how the data will be categorized. You could also uninstall any app you downloaded. As you notice, some of the apps shows new tab, Google Slides and Google Sheets. And most of the G Suite applications are opened in the Chrome browser, while other apps don't show open in a Chrome, which means they will open on their own window, such as the screen recorder I'm using. Another thing you need to know about the apps is that when you go to the setting, click on apps. When you click on manage your apps, you can see all your downloaded apps. And when you click on any one of them, you can see more options, especially the permissions. If you want more settings, check them out from here. All right, so one more thing I'm advising since Chromebooks have low internal storage is to change the downloads location from the internal storage to your drive so that they can be accessed anytime in any device using your Google account. To do that, you go to the Google Drive, click on My Drive. Your drive can be accessed immediately from the files. Right click and create a new folder. I will call it as Chrome Downloads. Then you go to the Chrome. Go to the settings, search for downloads, in location, click on change. Go to your Google Drive and select the file you just created. This way, all your downloads will immediately be saved in your Google Drive. I'll talk more about the Chrome browser settings in the Chrome browser video. Oh, before I forget, there is one more thing you can do with apps. You can put them all inside a folder by holding one app and placing it in another, such as this. And then you can simply just name it. I'll call this one G documents and simply rearrange the position of the apps. However, you like it. Next thing we'll be talking about the keyboard. You need to be familiar with it. Chromebook keyboard is a bit different from what you are used to. Since Chromebooks are designed for mostly internet browsing, you will see a lot of internet functions in the top row. You already know the escape button. This is back and next while browsing. And then you have the reload page. And then you have this button, which is used to do full screen. So when I click on it, you will notice that the top and bottom shelves will disappear. This becomes greatly handy, especially when working with G Suite applications. Click on it again. You will go back to the normal view. And then you have the multi view button, which shows all your current working apps. And then you have the brightness controls followed by the sound controls. Then you have the lock button. In some Chromebooks, this could be the shutdown or the start button. So this is one of the main changes. Another change is that you don't have caps lock anymore. You have the search button. When you click on it, the search bar will appear. To access caps lock, you need to click on Alt Search. So now when you type, you can see it's on. To deactivate it, you click on Alt Search again. There is also the Delete button. The Chromebook keyboard does not have the Delete button. If you want to delete something, you can simply click on Alt Backspace. Remember, you can always change those by going to the Settings, then keyboard and choose what they do. For instance, search, you can change it to caps lock. And to change between languages, you need to click on control space. You can notice it on the screen over here. Another handy shortcut is to capture a screenshot. You can do that by clicking on control multi view and there is the screenshot. You can copy it immediately or you can actually access it from files and then find the Chrome downloads folder we just created, you will see your screenshot saved there, which basically means the screenshot is immediately saved to your drive. You can also take part of the screen as a screenshot by clicking on Control Shift Multi View. The screen will be highlighted and then you select the portion by clicking on the mouse and dragging the area to be screenshotted. And there you have it. 
there are a lot of handy shortcuts you need to be familiar with to access all of them just click on Control alt question mark you can see all of the shortcuts it's a good idea to look at them and remember the ones that can make you more efficient while working in chrome there is also the touchpad gestures that you need to be familiar with for instance when you swipe to the right or left using two fingers you can go backward and forward or if you open a new tab if you swipe left and right with three fingers you can shift between them if you swipe with four fingers you can swipe between the desktops you've created swiping with three fingers upwards will enable the multi view swiping downwards will get you out of the multi view you could also use your fingers to zoom in and zoom out. And that's the Chromebook. Pretty nifty and handy device with powerful cloud computing tools. Thank you for watching. See you in the coming videos where I will also talk about Chrome and the other G Suite services that you need to know as a teacher or as a student. Subscribe and support for future content.